onto the show is how much down payment do I need to purchase a building? Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. and you hear a lot of people say, oh, 25% down payment. Yeah. But that's not always the case. Right, right. So right. How, how do you determine the down payment you need to purchase a property? That's a great question, and it does depend. Uh, it depends on a few things, the cash flow of the building number being number one. Because banks are going to look at a property and underwrite it based on um, the, the debt coverage ratio. The debt coverage ratio for commercial property is very similar to, to the debt to income ratio for residential properties. In fact, it's pretty much the same thing. The difference is in commercial, you use the income from the property as the primary source of qualifying. I mean, in fact, that's what you use. You're not using your personal income. It's just the income from the property. In a residential, uh, like a fourplex or something, they'll look at your personal income, and I think they'll give you 75% of the mm-hmm. of the rents in the building. But in commercial, it's all on the building. So, you you know, you know, um, that a bank may say, hey, we'll go up to 70 or 75 percent loan of value. Right. Which which would mean you have to put 25 to 35 percent down. But if the numbers aren't strong enough, they'll come back and say, well, we could go up to this amount, but we only can give you 60 percent loan of value. Therefore, you have to put 40 percent down. So the first thing that would be based on the debt to coverage ratio, debt coverage ratio. Yep. And so if, if the Income is, and we're talking about when we say income, the net operating income. You collect your gross income, you pay your expenses, and what's net is what you pay your mortgage payment with. And that ratio, um, right now, lenders, the most conservative lenders, or most aggressive lenders, I should say, are at a 1.17 debt wow. debt coverage, uh, which is tough. Uh, well, which is good. It's I've seen a couple lenders at 1.2 and a quarter debt coverage. That's that's tough to get to because that the, the strong the numbers have to be really really strong to get to one two and a quarter, one point one seven is a little bit more uh, realistic for the Bay Area, mm-hmm. but but it's something with the one point one seven coverage, most banks are not going to want to go over a sixty five percent loan of value, which means thirty five percent down is what you'd need, and so I'd say as a typical rule of thumb, in the Bay Area, thirty to thirty five percent down is what you're going to be looking at, and you may have to. You may have to go 40% down if you're in an Oakland or San Francisco or San Jose Peninsula type area where, you know, the cap rates are really low, like a 4% cap rate or something like that. You, you, you got to come in with a little bit more money down. We sold a building last year, and one of my agents in, in my office, in East Oakland at a 3.8 cap. The buyer had to put 60% down. So, wow. you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, that lender goes up to 70%, but on that property... They only went 40%. And the buyer was happy about it because it, it, instead of them paying cash, they can get some amount of a loan and then preserve their cash to come in and fix the property up, which mm-hmm. they did. So and I know that sounds a little bit crazy, 60% down, but, you know, in the Bay Area, we see a lot of cash transactions. You know, uh, that's kind of what it is. I would say rule of thumb, though, 30 35%. Yeah, 